Off season week one, baby. Most important Bills podcast on the market, Mad Men Sports. Who's here? The most handsome man, Diamond Say my Dave. name, please. Say my name. Say my name. To get new glasses tomorrow and a new, new phone. New glasses, new phone. What do you guys think of my hoodie? Very nice. Thanks to your boss. I like your boss a lot. He's a very good deal. Not going to comment on previous bosses. Why well, would We're all set. That's that a would third be take weird. it, that guy's. Second, actually. Second. Um, I'll make it a third. Listen, we're, this is off season week one. Here we go. A lot to talk about, a lot to dig into. We are on. It's official. Ooh. I think I comment on the game. You don't have to raise your hand. No, we're not there yet. Nor do you need to raise your hand. Listen, it's official now. It's it's officially official. The Buffalo Bills are on the hunt for a Super Bowl. We can say that, right? Final four, Brandon Bean said today in his press conference, they are not a Super Bowl team. So they are... That's okay in the nuts a little bit. That's all right. I mean, hey, you got to get better. Humbling yourself. The goal sure. is to win the Super Bowl. But listen, the Bills coming off a good year. 15 wins, won the division, AFC Championship game, and the whole coaching staff is looking to stay. Ken Dorsey, TBD. Yeah, late tonight well, we found Leslie out Frazier. that Leslie Frazier is staying. Oh. Uh, the the David Cully, Texans hired David Cully, the quarterback and passing coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens. The running team, Baltimore Ravens. Huh. Come on, man. But apparently Deshaun Watson hey, how about this? a David, fan. David Cully was in Buffalo. He was the quarterback's coach, Coach Josh J. Allen's first year. Man, right? Josh Allen's first year. David Culley was here. Let me just double check. Uh, it's it just goes to show that the Texans fresh. are still one of the worst managed, owned football teams. I'm lucky we're not those guys, right? We don't know for sure. He might be a good coach. No. David Culley, quarterback's coach, 2017-2018 season. So Josh Allen's first year, he was here. <whistles> Thank God he left because Ken Dorsey, Brian Dable. They, they've been getting ringing endorsements from around the league. And I'll even go as far to say that there was a report today that a lot of people believe that Ken Dorsey deserves more credit than Brian Dable for the maturation process with Josh Allen. Do you guys... Yeah, you like that word. Do you guys feel like there's a singular person that deserves credit? Yeah, Jordan, Maybe even Josh. Jordan Palmer. Yeah, Jordan Palmer. I mean, there's, there's a conglomerate. There is a... Maybe Barkley? Barkley. I mean, he said today in his press conference. Barkley's I don't know why right. he got a press conference, but he, he, he said today that... Every he wants to play badly, but he goes into the stadium every day with the focus of getting Josh Allen a better quarterback, making him a better quarterback. He already is the better quarterback. Matt Barkley, yeah, I agree. No, it's Jordan Palmer. Uh, he that, was put under Josh that, Allen's or Jordan. Jordan yeah, no, you're Josh keep Allen. Keep rolling. Was put under Jordan Palmer's wing from the very beginning, pre-draft, and the steps that he has taken with Josh Allen have been. Way more than any of the quarterbacks that he's seen from that draft class. Uh, Sam Darnold has worked extensively with Jordan Palmer as well. Didn't see the same results, but I think Jordan Palmer and Josh Allen click so well and probably a key attribute to Josh Allen's success. Among Ken Dorsey and Brian Dable, but give some shouts outs to Jordan Palmer. Yeah, listen, it was a good year. Josh Allen progressed probably further than we ever could imagine. My my crazy to say that. You. I mean, you I don't think anyone could have said that you, you you saw him as being this quarterback. I've been very high on Josh Allen. You could have been high on him. You never would have thought he was this good. I disagree. You I, you thought he was a forty six thousand yeah. yard. You want to run our fucking old podcast back? Yeah, but you never thought he was this good. No one ever could have. This was out of so. sync. Edmund Sports, you heard it here first. Davey, who, who's the most important for Josh Allen's success? Uh, his girlfriend. Um, no, <clears throat> no, uh, I I mean, I would probably say Ken Dorsey. I mean, and I'll say this as, uh, as best as I can. Brian Dable has been successful everywhere he's been in the league, whether it's been out of the league, whether it's Alabama, New England, anywhere else he's been that I can't think of off the top of my head. Uh, but Ken Dorsey's a new coach. He took Allen on in his second year as a quarterback coach, and he's done a very good job. I think Ken Dorsey will not only be a, a, a coach long term in this league, but he'll be a head coach in no time. Uh, I think Ken Dorsey should get all the credit. Now he's still eligible. And Josh Allen's girlfriend. And now he is still eligible to become the Miami Dolphins coordinator. There, there is still an opening there. As of the last I saw, I took a two-hour nap today, so I couldn't be missing that. Check out the new hat. Bought a thirty Ooh. rack of Labatt Blue. They sent me a hat. Yeah, nice. do you need help drinking that beer? I, I do. 
Where is it? It's in the patio back there. Can I offer me one? Ooh, Jesus. We need to get you off the juice. You want, you want to talk uh, about our little, little, little fun plan? We'll get there. I don't want to wait until we're, the end. We're not doing any talking Listen, about it. Listen, they can't yeah. wait till the end. They don't deserve to hear it. Is that fair enough? Yeah, but sometimes you got shit to do. We'll come back. We'll finish our shows. Do it. You There's something go ahead. coming towards the end that you guys are going to want to hear. Just go ahead and tell them. Just give them suspense. We need to start talking about something. We're talking. We've talked about we, money. We've always talked. So, we want you to email madmensports Just at now. gmail.com. We want to set up a dialogue moving forward. The only key piece of information that we need, if your username on YouTube is different than your email, we would just want you to put that in there so we know who we're talking to. But we want to get you involved in the Mad Men Sports process, so we want to open up that direct line of communication. Uh, MadmenSports at gmail.com. I'll put it in the description. Please email us. We have some big plans coming up within the next week or two, and we want you to be involved. And we might go as far to say as uh, you might be watching yourself on here. We want you on the show. As just a little token it's, of it's appreciation. Bragging, guys. It's not. We barely do anything over here. <laughs> We talk. We we want you know we want you to join the conversation. We want to hear from you for feedback coming up in the next season. We want to hear about you know your Bills memories. We want, we want to have a conversation with you. We'd love a conversation with you, and we want to get to know our you know true dedicated fans a little bit better. I don't think there's any harm in that, and I'm looking forward to it. We'd probably do it over Skype, Zoom, uh, Google Duo. I don't know. We'll Google figure it Duo, out. probably we'll figure it out. FaceTime, phone call. phone call. Maybe I'll be here. I'll snail mail you. David, we'll be here. Why wouldn't you be here? Uh, you guys. Sometimes do it without me, that's all. Darn it, I'm sorry. You all right, buddy? Truth is, I, uh, that's, yeah, I'm fine. I was about to drop a truth problem with tears. What's up, buddy? Truth <laughs> is, man. What do you I want tried to be on the last pod- podcast, but I, I missed the call, I guess. What do you want to say? What do you want to say? Nothing. All right. Well, they, we want to, in, in addition, to kind of go in regards to this, we just wanted to thank all of our listeners. I mean, we've said that specifically over the past couple weeks. But you mean so much to us, so. They do. Get emotional, man. No, it's speaking truths. From Malu Drake to the Blackburns. Dickhead. To to Dickhead. We love you. I will see him one day, and I will kill him. No, you won't. Why? You can't can't post something like that. That's a death threat. Well, it is what it is. Also, Uh, put money into AMC if Dave's getting off. So it's been three days, maybe four. I don't know. I didn't do the math. Whenever you listen to it. How do you guys feel about the game? Uh, you guys getting a little over it now? Over it, yeah. Disappointing. Uh, I, I just had to step back and realize I've never seen the Bills play this far into January. I would get excited when we would have a game on the 2nd or 3rd of January. I was like, wow, we're playing in the new year. But I've never seen the Bills play this long into January, and I have to take that for what it is and be grateful. You can't win them all. You can't always get to the big one. I'll just take it and ride yeah, I mean, listen, we'll always have 9-0. to zero. That was a moment and a feeling that I felt euphoric. And yeah, there was there was a little part of me that punched me in the face. And we were just celebrating. You take, you take everything way too personal. I had a foul in every day. Is that the Marcus? Yeah. Let me see it. Why are you chewing on your lip, man? Yeah, yeah so 9-0. to punched me in the face. If we hit 9-0, to zero, we'll always have 9-0. to zero. Hopefully that keeps us hungry and humble, right? Yeah. I'm always hungry. Dave, how, what were your thoughts on the game? Take it away. Give us your speech. Well, obviously, I wasn't here. I, we've heard. You know, everything at that point with the game going in, we were all very confident, and we should have been because I feel like we were the best team in the league at the time. Mm-hmm. We were unstoppable. We were the hottest team in the league. And, you know, I'm not going to say I'm okay with the loss, but the season as a whole was exciting. It was fun. And you saw how determined this team was after the Hale Murray play, um, how excited they were to get back on the field to show how good they were. They said they were open about saying, I think Jerry Hughes said that was the Cardinals Super Bowl. Tampa. Bills, whatever, whoever said it. Bills still had a Super Bowl to go to, so let them celebrate. And you saw how driven and hungry they were after. That's how driven and hungry I think they'll be next year. I think around this table, I'll be the overly optimistic one uh, from having conversations with you guys. I still feel really good about this team. So, so do all of us. Yes. Well, I know. I'm just over the moon about it. I, I'm, I'm not, but we'll get there in this <laughs> We'll get there this offseason. I, uh, I feel really good about it. You know, I, I think this team's going to be... I love that image of... 
Diggs and McDermott. Mm -hmm. Diggs and McDermott, I love that image of them hugging because it shows how hungry they both are to get back out there. And apparently Norman was there. No one's talking about Norman, but... That was a sight to see. When everyone was back in the locker room, Stephon Diggs was watching the Chiefs celebration. I think that sets him up well in the whole team for a fantastic revenge tour. I think they should take that picture and hang it in the locker room. Hey, remember when you uh, just didn't go back in the locker room and watched all those guys have a party? Here's a picture of it. Well, no, it's uh, I a thought reminder. me personally. I was going to say hello oh, for that. A reminder of uh, this is where we want to be. Yeah, Zach, what do you got? A lot of the things from that game really didn't sit right with me. I felt like the Bills really came out flat. And I felt like they stayed flat. And I feel like the coaching staff really let the Bills down throughout the game. And I feel like I constantly think about the game. I feel like I'm over it. But then I hear someone talk about it, and I'm like, I can't believe that they let that game happen the way they let that game happen. I mean, two awful calls for field goals there by McDermott. In a season where he progressed throughout the way on getting better and better at we're going for it on the fourth down. He, throughout the season, he was the best coach at not missing opportunities by going for it on fourth down. He played he played like he was in 2018 again. He got conservative on the Bills. He got conservative on that team, especially in situations where on the first drive he went for it twice on fourth down. And then to end out the half, he couldn't score a touchdown there. I mean, they ended up losing by officially, what, two touchdowns? Two field goals, you flip that game around, you don't throw an interception in the end zone because you're not trying to force it. The game's completely different. The game's completely changed. On the other side of the ball, Leslie Frazier completely lets him down by playing cover defense all game after you get you know, you get covered. You know you, you just get killed every way. There's 10-yard difference between everyone else and your guys. I mean, I just couldn't imagine sitting in a zone all game and just keeping in it and acting like everything's okay. The, the defense completely let them down. They, could, they couldn't get a stop. The only stop they did have was a drop ball by Tyree Kill. That's the only way that the defense got off the field. By a miscue on their part. And, you know, eventually the Bills did get bailed out in the first quarter by a, a punt muff. And then, you know, you take the punt muff away, you really only score one touchdown in that game. I mean, the offense couldn't get the ball rolling. The offensive line needs to get better this offseason. The running back situation needs to have a faster back there. You can't, listen, they ran more in the first half than they have all season besides the two games that they ran the ball like crazy in the Jets and the Patriots. But you need to have a back that's willing to be efficient when their number is called upon. I'm a big Singletary fan. I called on him all year as, hey, give, don't be scared to give him a ball. I think Zach Moss really wasn't ready, and I don't think Zach Moss is going to be ready next year. I, I think he is what he is. He's a number two running back. You need to get a faster guy in here. So when it's time to rely on your running back, you can trust your running back. And you can get speed out of it. Listen, they ran in the first half of the Chiefs game because those holes were open. They were playing a cover zone on Josh Allen, and they were blocking up their guys pretty well. We have Cole Beasley playing hero ball with a broken fibula. Listen, his house. It, listen, it, it might be cool that he's playing with that, but if you put Isaiah McKenzie out there, you probably get better production. And that's not a knock on him. Listen, you can call the guy a warrior all you want, but this this isn't. There's no accolades for playing hurt. I, 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 that's a whole different story, but sometimes you really just have to be better on that. I mean, get get your starters in there that are healthy. That's the bigger thing. They play, they start playing Gabriel Davis. Maybe Kenny Stills in there could have been a little bit more active. I get that he wasn't playing all season, but he played eight plays, and that wasn't helping your offense get open. I mean, you had guys that couldn't get open like Colby. So you got Gabe Davis out there who couldn't get open. John Brown was covered like a blanket. He really couldn't figure out a way. And then Allen starts forcing the ball, and then he throws that red zone interception, and he makes his plays po poorly. And the whole team just wasn't prepared, and it's really shocking that McDermott team wasn't prepared to win on that game. It's the AFC Championship game. If you're not going to do the things you need to do to win, you played scared, you coached scared. It was a very, very disappointing game. And listen, you guys can talk about it all you want. Rec historic season, I agree, but... You can't let everyone down in a situation like that. And McDermott apologized, and I don't think you should stop apologizing to his players because I feel like he really let them down. Yeah. I've been critical of him for years now, and you know, every now and then, you know, I've always called him the because he's Irish, McDermott. You know, I always call it the luck of the Irish that he just was able to pull out certain situations like Josh Allen getting hurt so he could be on the bench his rookie year. You know, and Allen taking it in his own hands to progress his career. I mean. McDermott's gotten lucky and lucky again, and 
I feel like he makes very poor decisions throughout his tenure with the coaches, but I, I, that's besides the point at this yeah, point. It's something specifically I don't want to say. It seems maybe a little long ago at that point. But going to the fact of uh, punting and or going for it or kicking a field goal in odd situations. The Kansas City Chiefs were ranked 26 in red zone defense. Attack. You know who was number one? In red the zone offense. Buffalo Bills. Hadn't thrown, Josh Allen hadn't thrown a red zone interception ever up until last game. You gotta go for it. You gotta attack in the red zone, especially when those rankings are flip flopped on the other side of the spectrum. Um, like, I mean, they played against good defense after good defense for the past two months. Why would you? Why would you turtle against a bad turtle, defense? Turtle. I would say the Chiefs are one of the worst defenses yeah. we played this year. And the Bills turtled against them. I mean, it's pussy. That's pussy shit. I'm sorry for the language, but. The, Sorry, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Blackburn. But what, what are you talking about there? No, seriously, I apologize. But, I mean, seriously, what the hell do you kind of performance is that? I get that they're the Chiefs, they're fast, but trying to compete. I mean, they weren't putting themselves in a position to win, and they weren't prepared to be in that game. And, I mean, I felt like the whole time, as soon as 9-7 to seven happened, I felt like the game was over because they didn't have the guns to stick with them. Well, McDermott was playing checkers while Andy Reid was playing chess. I mean, that's pretty obvious, I think. I, I think the offense, and I've said this before, I, the performance of the offense wasn't bad. The decisions the offense made was bad. Coaching decisions was bad. The offense Al- really fucking Al- Allen still played an okay game. Apparently, Romo, and he knows more than I do, I'm just an average joke. That guy's annoying as shit, too. He saw down the field that if he read... If he read coverages as well as he was on the field, he'd probably still be playing in the NFL right now. Exactly. But Leslie Frazier, I, his coaching was awful. I don't understand. Trey White had a bad game. No one can sit here and justify it. He might have had his worst game as a Bill. Tyreek Hill made him look like a little bitch. He was really fast. Tremaine Edmonds. It's time, it, going into next season, and people will either either going to disagree with this or agree with us, it's time to decide whether he's the guy or not. His training camp needs to be explosive, or you need to bring someone in here to... To take it, he's going on. I think twenty three years old, twenty two, which is amazing for his age and size. But he's been in the league for going on his third year, maybe fourth year right now. It's time to start performing like it. First round pick with his talent. If you don't get anything out of it, he's not going to get a second contract with the Bills, nor should he. Milano's probably not going to be here next year. Also, did not play a good game. Our linebacker core did not play well. Uh, Kelsey was open the entire game. Trey White Over did an awful safeties job. Safeties team played awful. I mean. Trey White did an awful There's job. There's just a failure weekend. to prepare in that game. And I know I've said this before. I know I've said this all season. The Bills' defensive pass rush is pathetic and awful. So the Bills, for the past three years, have drafted a defensive lineman. The, I'm going to call Epinenza. His name is spelled wrong. I don't care. His name I said his name wrong. I don't care. That's not the point here. I'm going to consider him a first-round pick, even though he wasn't. Bills have drafted two first-round picks in the past three years and still the best, most dominating defensive player you have right now on the line is an other side of 30, Jerry Hughes. That needs to get better. It's not good enough. Bills need to get a pass rush, and that needs to be the focus of this offseason. They got Mario Addison, another Carolina guy. That Carolina shit needs to end. Carolina, uh, the connection. He did not play well. I, I'm not sure what his numbers are for contract, but he didn't play well. Ed Oliver, you need to get more out of him, or he needs to go. You need to get more out of these players. Defensive line killed you this last game. Edmonds and Milano, who everyone's talking about, Killed you the last game, and Trey White played pretty awful, and he needs to be held responsible for it. Offense, uh, offense. Cole Beasley did play with a broken whatever he had, fibula. Still played balls to the wall, played awesome. Uh, Diggs had some good plays. I think Knox played maybe his best game as a Bill. He he was what a tight end was supposed to be. He was reliable for Allen. Allen, Allen played well. You can't expect more out of Allen. He's doing what he's called upon. He had all of their yards. I mean, uh, offensive line. <laughs> That's a tricky one going into the offseason because three out of those five guys are free agents. So what do you do there? And they did not put up a good tape for that, for the offseason. So, that, I mean, that's my speech. And, like, all season, I harped on the run, run, run. Bills and Zach says it's because it's what the Chiefs gave us. But your strength all season, you have an MVP-type player like Allen. You choose to start the game off running. To me, that's pathetic. Singletary is... He, he doesn't have the explosiveness. He's not that good. Everyone's going to talk about Antonio Williams. Everyone's going to talk about Kenny Stills. Everyone's going to talk about Duke Williams. Just stop with that crap. Kenny Stills, obviously, is not that good. He didn't get called up because he's not that good. A uh, uh, hurt Gabe Davis still played over him. Players like that has to stop. You have to stop getting excited for these stupid offseason players 
that get called up here. I thought we weren't going negative. Guys, the sky is not falling. The sky is the not bills, falling. I'm talking specifically about that game. Yeah, you were talking about a lot of I, I, I was ranting. I wasn't able to on Sunday. Listen, I, there's I, no, no, I'm still no, really no, high on the bills. Listen, there's no harm in being mad about that game. They laid an absolute like, I'm higher than draft pussy on the bills right now because I, I still think the bills are going to have a great season next year. Guys, you're talking about a team that, yes, may have laid a goose egg. And you're allowed, to be mad championship. About you're allowed to be mad about it because you know how good this team but, is. But, I mean, I, I, I know where you guys are coming from, but I also know where our listeners, not our, our loyal few, but the masses are going to be like, why are you, why are both of you taking shit on this team? Uh, we I'll have take a, a shit wherever I want. You have a quarterback throwing for 4,500 yards. You have the best wide receiver in football. You have the best, one of the best cornerbacks in the league, the best safety Duo in the league. Agreed. <laughs> You're just gonna get you, both. I, I I'm not on this side. You guys are gonna get a lot of shit in the comments for this. I, I don't care. You guys well, I've been getting shit all season. Dave, you get a Some lot of friend requests there, right? No. Needs new glasses. What That's what he that? needs. Who is it? Nothing. David Wilson. I'm not sure. We'll talk about that in a minute, but. I, I'm, I'm super high on the Bills. I'm just frustrated with that game because the game was in our grasp. The game could, we could have had the game. We were up nine nothing. McDermott coached an awful game. Leslie Frazier, the fact that he's being considered for a head coach, is sickening to me because they oh, clearly, he's they clearly don't. No, he's not. Obviously, anymore, he blew but he didn't watch that game. Uh, uh, the Texans didn't watch that game apparently. So I'm super high on the Bills. I still think the Bills will win the AFC East next year. I still think the Bills are going to compete for the top four slot in the AFC, and that's a good feeling. But we could have had more. See, I'm in the camp of Richard Perks, and I, I know he's watching, and I know he's probably watching the first half of this episode and being like, man, these guys really taking some softballs on these guys because he, he's he's in the camp that they shouldn't have laid an egg like they did. And, you know, I'll be honest. I, I just think that the outlook for this team with the cap situation going on and the Jets having two first-round picks and the Dolphins having two first-round picks, there's no uh, – listen – the Bills should know it more, better than anyone. There is no guarantee you go back to the NFC Championship game with this team, with Josh Allen as your quarterback. A ask, ask anyway, ask Dan Marino. Like, I mean, fuck Dan Marino. This, this, these things just don't happen. You have to work for it. And when you get to the situation, you have to play your best ball. And the fact that the the Bills laid an egg really doesn't sit well with me because. And I'm go listen. I'll I'll work through it all off season. I will meticulously make this team better. What are you going to do? And predicting, I, I, I will... We're driving a one bills drive. We're taking over. Again. <laughs> I've seen you run, and you're not going to hold that team much. I, I, I No, not personally me. I, like I said on the live a couple weeks In ago. The stocks. My, my playing days are over. But, I mean, I, I'll, I'll, I'll scout so, any free agent. I'll, I'll, I'll help the fans. I'll help the listeners. I'll help you guys. Brandon come, Bean. Give us a fucking Yeah, I'll brain. help anyone that's willing to listen come to terms with the best situation for the Bills, like I will have always. But right now, I'm just upset about that game. And I'm sorry to the listeners that were looking for some little insight here, looking to get a breakaway. Dave said we don't want to talk about this game anymore, but I, I'm just not, I'm unsettled. I did. I started this off with people that want to hear about this game. So if you want to talk shit to either of these guys, email us at madmensports.gmail.com. No, 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 emails. Do the YouTube comments. No, because if I have Text to Text us at 716-698-2. How do you know my number? I memorize everyone's. Just email us. I don't care. Don't listen to him. Five, don't five, listen five. to him. <laughs> don't fucking put your phone number on YouTube. It's all right. <laughs> email us at madmensports at gmail.com. We'll open up a line of communication. We'll get you on the pod. Maybe we come up with the numbers next, next text in next year. That's a lot of work. I'm no, not buying a new no, phone. No, I'm saying you just get one of those burner ones. Yo, you need a burner phone? I got no guy. Why do you know a guy? I got a guy for everything. Madmensports at gmail.com. We're not done, are we? I don't know. Do you want it to be done? Listen, listen. If you guys want to be positive Keep about the Bills, come back in the next episode. We'll put a whiteboard up here. We'll put the whole roster up here. We'll come to terms. We'll tell you what we need I got to a fix. fun segment I've been working on. He texted me to me while I was working. <laughs> What's your fun segment? Talk about it. No, we're not doing it's it. It's not something. It's going to sound stupid to the people. Yeah, we'll do it next and week. It's going to sound stupid. We'll do it well, next not, week. Jake, have we decided here. if we're doing one episode a week or staying out for two? Well, we only. I'm not going to say it on the camera. Well, it depends. If we get, if this is well received, we'll see what happens. I just want to hang out with you, Jake. We'll do two a week. Um, remains to be seen, but we have some big.